everybody this is Jean True Love from True Love Quilts for You. Um, I'm going to be doing a semi tutorial uh, to follow on what I was telling you about my last video my clothes pin my clothes peg holder. Now I call it a semi tutorial because um, the, the two I've made uh, other than this one I'm sort of experimenting and because you or you or may not have this same hanger that I was using, um, your cutting will be different. I've not given a pattern for this curve, this uh, cutout here. I show you exactly what I've done. So basically, this tutor, this uh, video might be a little bit of, again, watch me over my shoulder and watch what I do to make a close pin or closed peg if you're in Europe holder now this one um, I this was my prototype that I made a couple weeks ago I put a ruffle on the bottom the one the ones I've made uh, the other ones that I've only made two other ones somebody said oh I'm gonna make half a dozen and I usually do that messing about trying to get it right um, this one had a ruffle on it you could have very easy I could have very easily put a ruffle but I chose to do because I have like 10 million yards of it did this ball fringe again which I will show you this fabric here people are asking me where did I get this fabric it is not vintage fabric I was talking about vintage using vintage fabrics um, however this was a um, this is new fabric made to look old and um, thank you Becca so much because I I forgot to look it up and tell you guys what this fabric line is I don't know if it's available it's called handmade by Bonnie and Camille and it was a, I use this fabric line about two years ago for my 2018 block party so it may or may not still be available but that is this beautiful um, print that I had two left over from my fat from my fat quarter bundle um, because when I was making my sampler quilt I didn't want to cut up these beautiful prints and I put them aside so I just was messing about trying to make this bag and it turned out nice, but it not not great. Like I didn't know what to, I was doing there, and my, my you know my my binding. But it was real pretty. But I went to I, I thought well I'm going to show you um, uh, the next one I made, which I'm quite pleased about. I think I actually shared with you the um, fabric, this blue fabric with the cherries, the border print. Now this one I made, I put the bobble print, the the pom pom fringe on, and this one I can, you can take out the hanger. You can take out the hanger if you want to wash this little bag here. And it's just, this is just a, a white fabric I had. As you can see, I put rickrack on this one. And I bound this with a pre-purchased uh, bias binding, wide bias binding. Again, this, and then again, I didn't have a pattern. Um, and th it turned out like that. And I'm, I'm quite, I was quite pleased with it. I mean, quite pretty. Um, what I did here, this is a vintage handkerchief. Uh, no, excuse me, a vintage napkin. Just a, a napkin. I think I showed you in my last video, actually, of uh, this napkin here um, that I just cut in half. I, had about, I only have about three of them. So uh, somebody said I would never cut up vintage linens. Well, for the most part, 90%, I wouldn't either. But if I see a if I see a, a, a linen that's not extremely precious, I would have no I would have no um, qualms making it into a tote bag or making it to a part of a quilt. And again, I showed you some of the bits on my last video, the for, to um, the upcoming video for this tu tutorial, um, how I, I've used some vintage linens, uh, tablecloths is in, in the middle of quilts. Um, and then this is a napkin, but it wasn't big enough. And again, I'm going to show you my actual, what I did, my actual sort of semi-tutorial. This is what I'm going to show you, what I, how I made this clothespin holder. Now, as you can see, this is the other half of that napkin. I just cut it in half. So it was a little napkin, a little like a cream linen napkin that had the red and the pink and the green flowers on it, the leaves on it. And I just had cut it literally physically in half and then I used it, this for that. So for fit like 50 cents, I have a beautiful, you know, clothes peg holder from just one napkin, the top of it, okay? So, so pretty. It wasn't big enough. And again, I show you how I made it sort of bigger and I had a little bit of rickrack on there. So linens, if, even if something doesn't, Fit. If it's if it's if you're using something, well, think outside the box and add add to it. That's what I did there. I, I, I had had to add a little bit of fabric. And there's my back. 
And again, that it's this just evolved because my my other two bags, I only put the plain backing on it. Even that one that I had done, I had just put the plain backing on it. And as I was making this, doing just the plain backing, I thought. Well, I have the piece of fabric left over. Why don't I just stick it on the back? And I like it because it's made it even more substantial. At one point, these are this is five layers of fabric, just muslin, or, or like mine is a white fabric, but you can just use muslin for this bit. And I, I actually lined this top bit here. And again, my I messed up. I really messed up. I didn't edit it out. I, I closed this bit up. I went to put my hanger in and I'm like, oops, <laughs> it didn't work. So I had to open that up. My hanger comes right out again if you want to wash it and whatever your hanger is, if you want to use a heavy wooden hanger. And again, I used the bobble trim at the bottom, the pom-pom trim there and here. I could have very easily put a ruffle on the bottom, but I'm, I show you sort of how to do that. And as I, so that's what you're going to be seeing um, the, in, this to, in this video to follow, me just making this. I do give measurements, and um, for, for any of you who want to just use fabric, I would think you would need about, um, say, three fat quarters. That's erring, or I had used a half a yard. I, ha I used half a yard of this pink floral, and then um, I, I guess it's about, I, I pull about a yard of muslin, the white, but it's not a lot of fabric. But I also, I want you to um, explore the possibility, if you're making these, of all different trims. All different trims. You can have the bobbles, you can have fringe, you can have rickrack, you can have lace. I mean, you can make ruffles. Um, whatever, f like if you have an antique, um, some kind of fringe or some kind of trim, some kind of ribbon or a braid, it would be so pretty. It lends itself to that. That's what I'm saying. And so I give you a general idea of how I, this is constructed. Yours will look different, maybe obviously different fabrics, different trims. Um, if you wanted to use the a quilt binding, by all means you could. That would have to be cut on the bias because you are going around big curves. I like the pre-purchased um, quilt binding or um, double fold bias binding because it's on the bias and that just curved right around there. And I show you how the, the trick to putting bias binding on a, a project. Um, so that's my, and then I put the bias binding there. And as I said, this is lined, this is lined. Now, uh, there was quite a few suggestions. Um, this could just be, I mean, obviously for clothespins, I must say there's about, there's a, many dozen clothespins in, in this bag here, and that will be going in there or whatever. It really does. Now, I was thinking at it, it sort of pulls, it sort of pulls, but I'm not bothered by that. It's like what it is supposed to be. It's a clothespin holder. But I suppose I woke up in the middle of the night thinking maybe if I could made a pleat there to make it a little bit bigger, I'm not bothered. Um, I think it's so pretty. It's just so pretty. Now, I was looking at this also, and again, one of the suggestions, or, or, or somebody had said when they were younger, they had put their socks and their stockings in something like this. And I was looking and I thought, what a, fa and I think I might do it. What a fabulous idea to get some beautiful fabric there. Just that, just that alone, that little beautiful hanger, covered hanger. Isn't that delightful? I think that is just so pretty. Say you had, say you were going to a bridal shower or a, yeah, something like that, um, or an office present, and you just made this, the, you just covered a coat hanger, or say a dozen of them. You can get, I believe I got these, um, these nice hangers, they're nice hangers, um, from like TJ Maxx or Ross or whatever, and I think you can get like a dozen for like, I, now they're probably a little bit more, like $7.99 or five or six or seven or eight dollars or something like that. So they're just plain coat hangers, but it would be an inexpensive present. You could then make this little collar, this little, this little coat for your coat hangers, embellish it real pretty, maybe put a bow for a beautiful, and like do a dozen of them for somebody. How pretty would that be? Wrap it up with a lovely bow. No one's gonna have your present. I just thought that was so pretty. And also, you could also um, put somehow, like make this, make a plane hanging and do a zipper, do a zipper in here. And then go on, when you go on holiday, like put the zipper up here on a, like a pocket. You know, that might be a little bit more advanced, but I mean, I could do that. Put a zipper up here, have this in my hanging up with my, say my, in the hotel room, my passport and some jewelry or whatever. 
um, as a little bit of a safe under under your shirt. Um, if you're if you're going to be making these, and if I would make these as like a, a wedding present or a shower gift, I think I would put like little buttons, like just sew two little buttons on here. So like a like it's it's um, practical. Like a, a strappy dress won't fall off. So if you put a little button there, it's practical as well as beautiful. Oh, I think that's such a lovely little little idea. And again, you can embellish it. So anyway, that is my. Do I have anything else to say? That is my. Um, that's sort of my looking over my shoulder at how I made this. Um, my lovely little um, closed pin bag holder. Again, I just use the. I just use the bobble the, the pom pom trim there. Um, I just think that's so very sweet. So basically you need perhaps a couple fat quarters, um, a yard of muslin, and that's erring on the very generous side, and a bag and a um, pack of tape, and of course your coat hanger. And so um, I liked this coat hanger, um, and again, I made it so that the coat hanger comes out. I would think that you, if something is, this is so pretty, I've been hanging my washing out, um, with my little, my pretty little thing. I bring it in every night. I mean, I'm not going to leave that out in the rain, um, obviously. Um, so I would think that if, if it does get dirty, I mean, to keep it pristine, I would think maybe like a cold, gentle hand washing and then lay it flat and then like press it really with a hot iron to keep it really nice because it's a pretty little, it's a pretty practical little thing. But, um, oh, I love it. So the, again, this is using a vintage napkin. If, if you had um, handkerchiefs, you could perhaps applique or applique handkerchiefs on there. It's just so pretty. And again, not just for clothespins, for, um, you know, for, for, for your bits, um, for, for jewelry or for, <coughs> excuse me, anything that you would uh, want to, you know, keep safe but pretty. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial or the, this whatever it is to follow. I'm just looking over my shoulder. There's this one again. Again, another little prototype that I did. Oh, I did curve the corners. You see the difference? You know me and my curved corners. I made that and I thought it, it wasn't hard mitering that tape. It wasn't hard, but I, I just don't like, I just, I think that's just, it's, it's okay, but I love my curved corners and I show you how I did that. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this and thank you so very much for all of your um, best wishes. So this is, why, this is what I'm going to be making my little clothespin holder with and this is approximately what I'm going to be using. Again, I'm stressing this isn't a tutorial because I'm just making it with what I have. But I'll try to be, uh, uh, give you a general idea of what you will need. And then you can just follow along with me as I make this one. Each one has turned out a little bit different, as you've seen in the beginning. So this is what I'm doing for this closed pin holder. I have here about half a yard of my, the body of my, my closed pin holder here, this pink dot. And then I have about a yard and a half of just a plain muslin, just a plain cotton muslin or any white fabric you have. That's not muslin actually, but whatever. It's just white fabric. Um, and now um, I have a pack of uh, double extra wide double fold bias binding. Okay. For my, for this one that I'm using. You can, if I wanted to, I ha could have rickrack. I could have an extra bit of fabric, uh, perhaps a red and white or pink and white dot or even a white strip for a ruffle on the bottom like my first one but I'm not doing that on this one this is going to be a little bit basicer a bit more basic um, but I had gotten I've had this forever um, this pom-pom trim that I'm using on all of them um, so just a, a couple yards of this pom-pom trim if you're going to be making one if you like the pom-pom trim any kind of trim any kind of lace any kind of um, embellishment that you want to put on it by all means but these are basically what you need and then I have this profile hanger and as I've explained in the beginning I've tried to make this uh, this little bag here so you can take the hanger out um, so whatever profile your hanger is is contingent on how you're going to cut your fabric you may you may need a little bit more or a little bit less but I think half a yard will about do it as you can see my hanger goes this is half a yard now Again, in the beginning, you saw my blue and red one with my cherries and my half a napkin. I used half a napkin on the top. This is the other half of the napkin, okay? This is the other half of my 50-cent napkin, right? But as you can see, 
that's not what that's not big enough that's not big enough and again i'm just sort of i'm just sort of um uh chopping and and doing what i do to to make this work for me so the first thing i'm going to do is where's my other scissors is um for this napkin for the napkin i'm going to cut off the hemmed the rolled hem that's come from the manufacturers i'm just going to cut that off so i just have a piece of fabric now you would probably want a piece of fabric if you're just going to do this with fabric obviously i'm it's a little bit different for me because I'm using this napkin but you probably want a piece about start about a piece about nine inches wide by yes yeah, about nine in, about nine inches say eight or nine inches by the width of your hanger okay so it's just a just a, a, a piece now I've cut off those hems but what I'm going to be doing is like I did on my other one I have enough of this fabric here because I only need I only need pretty much just a small bit of this half yard um, but I'm going to be I'm going to be wanting to put a, a filler piece in so I'm going to cut off so let me just see if my half yard yeah this is about right because I sort of want to maybe hopefully to match so I'll cut off about three three inches or so I'll show you what I'm doing here just to make my this piece of fabric this piece of fabric a little bit wider there okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my machine I'm going to I'm going to make this bit this piece wider so I will have a little bit of pink on each side of my hanger here and I'll be right back so I've ta I've taken this over to my machine and I've just I've just added on these two pieces of fabric here as you can see just to make my piece a little bit bigger if you have one piece of fabric you don't have to worry about it now what I'm going to do is I, I just found this my this bit of um rickrack and this is where this is where you can do whatever you wish um to start embellishing your little uh holder here and what I want to do is just on this seam here I've just cut off two bits you have some extra trim around some extra rickrack because we're going to be cutting off this profile here I'm not going to waste my rickrack up here or over here I'm just going to go over to my machine just cut off a little bit that I need and I just want a little bit of rickrack right there I like rickrack and again it, it sort of harkens back to that 30s look so I'm going to put that on my bit here so it just it just gives a little bit more interest on of my of my um little bag here and again not a tutorial but it's like how you can with the little bits and bobs that you have around the house how you can make this your own so I'm just going to go over and I'm going to sew that rickrack on right there so as you can see, I put my rickrack on my little end bits. It just adds a little, a tiny little touch and embellishment. Let me move this back. And what I want to do is I'm going to isolate my coat hanger exactly where I want it centered. I'm going to lose a little bit of that design, but that's okay. So that's just the small little bit of roses I'm going to get up there. Just a sweet, and I'm going to leave the exact same amount here on my, my uh, pink little flowers that are going to show right there. I didn't need to actually put all that up there, but that's okay. So now I'm going to, I'm just going to slice around and I'm going to stay away about half an inch away from the profile of my, um, my coat hanger there. Okay. This is where you need to be brave. Let me just move this over so you can, so I can do this just about half an inch. And then up there doesn't need to be doesn't need to be perfect up here because I'll show you what why well, I, th I think what I did I'll just move this over and just sort of slice that off just up there for this second okay now whoops oops it didn't cut through All right, cut that through here let me just use my scissors to cut this through <laughs> I'm talking to the camera Maxwell <laughs> okay okay so now we have this bit okay oh isn't that pretty look at that look how pretty that is oh it's lovely let me just see you see how pretty just just with a few little bits of trim and embellishment now what I wanted to do I think this is what I wanted to do I want to add this piece of um where did where is the beginning <laughs> where's the end oh here we go I want to add this little bit of ball fringe on the end here okay that I think just makes this so sweet and pretty that little bit of ball fringe on the end but what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to put the the uh, ball fringe on the, I'm going to take this bit off of here, our sort of lining piece right there, and I'm just going to go over 
and I'm going to very, 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 very loosely on the bottom of this, I'm going to very, very loosely um, with, I mean, keeping that very relaxed, I should say, keeping it very relaxed. By all means, you can, you can um, uh, clip it if you want. This is, on the, this is on the right side of the fabric. Okay, this is on the pretty side of the fabric. My ball fringe, with the ball fringe going up, I'm going to just very, very loosely sort of baste that on just so it's secured on there. Then what I'm going to do is with the pretty side of my lining or whatever, with the pretty side, I'm going to just come back and I'm going to sew this lining bit onto the bottom here. And then when we turn it around, when we turn it, that ball fringe will flip down. Okay, so you have that? So I'm going to be, I'm going to sew this ball fringe with the fringe up, okay? And then the lining and we're just going to sew that bottom seam catching this bit of, of um, the ball fringe, okay? And then we're just going to be turning it into the inside. And I'll just go over to my machine and do that. So, as you can see, I have attached my ball fringe on the right side of my pretty fabric here. And I've just sort of tacked it on. And with pushing that up, I'm now putting the right side of my lining, my muslin or whatever, to the right side, the pretty side of my, the top of my thing, and I'm just tucking that ball fringe up. And you must remember, when you're, when you're working with any kind of fringe, or any kind of lace, or any kind of trim, you must never pull it. You must never pull rickrack. You're, you're, you know, perhaps your, um, your, your idea is like you're going to lay it nice and flat, so you just pull it a little bit. You don't do that, because inevitably, whatever piece of fabric that you are putting a trim on, it will pucker up. It will pucker up. So it's very, very, very important that you just lay anything, a lace, a trim, a fringe, anything, rickrack, you just lay it on the fabric that you are working with. I don't have, I'm not using any pins. I'm okay with that. And I have my regular presser foot on, but it, by all means, if you're more comfortable using a zipper foot to do this, by all means, I put my fringe on with a seam with a with the stitching there, but I'm going a little bit closer. So hopefully, when I turn it sort of inside out, um, you're just going to see sort of the ball fringe hanging down. If you see a little bit of the trim heading, it's fine. And again, I've cut these really well, so my edges here are matching pretty pretty good. Again, I'm just. I'm just relaxing this fabric. I'm not stretching any of my fabric or any of my trim. And there, it doesn't match quite. You see that? It's, it's pulled, it's stretched a little bit, but I'm okay with that. It'll be okay, it'll be taken up in the seam. So now, when I go to turn it, there we go. When I turn it like that, yeah, that's so sweet. So you see a little bit of that, where, a little bit of where the trim was, but I'm fine with that because for the most part, out to the end, you see a pretty bit of ball fringe. So now I'll show you what we do next. So here's my pretty top that I have, I have made so far. Isn't that lovely with a little ball fringe? I have pressed it up. By all means, if you would want to go and um, top stitch along there, you could, but I'm not bothered. And again, when it's done, all you'll see is a little bit of tiny little bit, bit of rickrack, but you'll, you'll notice it and it'll be just so sweet. Now, what I've done is I've taken my piece of fabric, my um, half yard of fabric, and I have cut off. Um, yeah, it has a design. It has a pattern. I want, I want the pattern to go up my roses. I pretty much centered it. That's okay. Um, this is about 11 inches by about 18 inches, I think that is. I've just cut a piece of, cut piece of that off. Um, so actually you could you be using fat quarters, obviously, and I'll tell you that in the beginning. This is a fat quarter and that's a fat quarter. The rest of it is the muslin. And as I was saying in the beginning, I've sort of lined this and then relined it and then lined it again, um, only for strength. And as you know, I like, to, I like to have everything pretty strong. So what I've done is I've also cut out a piece of um, my, my lining, my muslin fabric. Now this is again, I, I can't, I can't, I don't have a pattern for this, but what I want to do is I want to cut out my my hole now for for to get into my um to be able to get into my uh, my clothes pins. So what I do, I'm going to do is I'm going to put I'm going to put the the right sides together, the pretty sides together, and then I'm going to fold this in half. I'm going to fold that whole lot in half, and then 
and I have both the lining and the outside. Now I'm going to start. I'm going to start small cutting it because I don't have a pattern. I'm going to just start small. Now, obviously, if I cut from the fold, you cut from the fold, obviously, up into here, a nice curve. It's going to be double. Okay, so I'm going to cut down about. I'll cut down about three inches, and then curve up about three inches, and I'll see how that looks. I'll see how that looks. I'm going to. I'm going to sort of um, check it all the while. Now that's okay because now you have to understand this is going to be going like that but it's too small. It's too small. So rather than rather than cutting it too big, I'm going to go back on myself. I mean um, too big and and, not, and have it too big and gaping. I'm just going to go down about an inch and go up uh, go a, a, another inch or so. I can always make it bigger can't make it smaller. And there, I think, mm, now I want it a little, I'm going to keep this width, I'm going to keep it here, but I want it a little bit less here, I think. So I'm going to go back, and again, if I had a pattern, but I don't, but this, this isn't, it's not rocket science. So I'm going to come back on my fold here, and I'm just going to sort of taper it up to that bit there. So I made that a little bit more shallow. There you go. I like that. There you go. And again, visually, 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 visually. Lay everything out visually. And that, I think, once that's stitched and everything, I think that's just lovely. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over and I'm going to stitch. Um, let me just see. Uh, how am I going to do that? Yes, 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 that's right. I'm going to stitch along the top, around the curved edge, and over this other side. I think that's how I want to do it. I think that's how I, I did my last one. So what I'm going to do, quarter of an inch, I'm going to stitch around. I'm going to go around, quarter of an inch or a little bit more, whatever. And then, so we, when we turn it inside out, this will be a finished edge here. And then I'll show you um, what I do next to get this a really nice edge. So I've stitched, I've stitched the lining pretty sides together to the pretty side here. I've stitched along the top. I, 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 actually, I don't think maybe I needed to do that, but anyway, this is how it's turned. Because we're going to bind this edge anyway, and now it's going to be a finished edge. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clip this curve. Anybody, any, any of you who know about dressmaking know that to, to have a, a seam or a curved edge turn nicely, whether it be a collar or, or anything, you really need to clip. A lot of people actually take out notches. They like go this way and then they eliminate the fabric and they take out a notch of, fa of fabric like that. Well, if, if I could, if it worked. Yeah, so, so by all means, I just clip. I mean, I clip every quarter of an inch or so and that way the fabric has a chance to sort of turn over on itself. And when you see we, we turn this in or right sides inside out, um, it'll be a really nice laying down curve here. And I'm going to clip these corners, obviously, there at the, at the edges, right here. And just keep clipping here. So when it turns it over, when it turns inside out, we have a nice curved edge. It's going to be bound anyway, but it's still... It's still going to be real nice. As you see, this is basically what I've done is basically made a facing, obviously. This is our facing of our, of our little bag here. And the bag, the, the pins will be in here. Obviously, it's a wider bag than it is tall and deep, only because of the size of my, um, my hanger here. But it's real pretty, so we can get in there. Now I'm going to go over and I'm going to press that really, really well. And then I'll be over at my machine and I'll show you how I'm just going to add a little bit of extra pink, a little bit of extra um, finished edge. I, couldn't, I, wouldn't have to, I wouldn't have to put the seam binding on, but it'll just add a little bit of solid piping right there on this, on this edge here. So as you can see, I have put a bias binding around the edge of my of, around the edge of my top. Now I will show you at the very end when I bind the whole entire little package here how I do that. Um, but for now, I, that's that's the next step. So what we have now is we have a nice finished edge here and edge here. And what I've done is I've taken a little piece of my muslin and I've sort of just eyeballed it. 
I'm going to be, this is how my little bag's going to end up looking. So I've just cut it's straight here, a piece of muslin straight here and straight here. But what I'm going to do now, that's what I, that's what the top, that's what it's going to look like. Forget about this up here for now. This is nice and straight on my, the back of the, and the, 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 um, the lining, the lining as it were, okay? One phase of lining, all right? Now, because I want to keep this, I want to be able to insert my hanger in here, into this bit here when it's finished, okay? I'm, I, I, what I'm going to do though, we have yet another backing lot, bit of muslin, but what I want to do now is I want to make sure everything is else straight and in order right here, and I'm going, that's how it's going to end up. I just want to take my piece over here, and I'm going to pin it. I'm going to stitch. I'm going to stitch along this top, it's a finished edge here. I'm going to stitch along that top finished edge, okay? I'm just going to stitch along that top finished edge and then I'll be back and I'll show you how I'm just going to, um, I'm going to stitch all the way around. But for now, I just want to secure this edge here. Make this piece one with this piece and then I'll trim it down. So as you can see, I have stitched down this finished edge here. That's why I did the finished edge. That's a little bit, I, I, I don't quite know what I'm doing, but I think it's okay. What, we're, what, what I've done, there's two lines of sort of defense for this bit of the front, and then there will be two lines in the back, so it's sort of a four-layer uh, holder, which I think instead of like just sticking two fat quarters together, you want it lined to have a little bit of substance because the thing that doesn't weigh a ton, but you know it, it could it could pull. So you want it as as um, strong as possible. So what I'm going to do is I've I've pretty much trimmed this up. I'm going to trim this up right around here, and I'm going to trim it really really well with the profile of what I've already done. This is, don't worry about here. This is a little bit high. I sort of got to figure this bit out on the neck here. I think I got to do some hand stitching. Ugh, gross. Anyway, so here's, look, look at this. It's like coming together, right? So now what we're going to do, I just want to keep checking if my, when I go to do that, yeah, my hanger will fit right in there. That's it. That's it. That's, that's, but this is attached, but it's, it's only going to, sort of the, the top apron here is just going to be attached at the sides and my hanger can still go in and out. That's what I wanted right now. So now what I'm going to do, this is, this is good. This is good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin this or clip it or whatever you want to do. And starting, hmm, starting at the top here or on each side, on each side, just pin it. What we're going to do is again, I don't know quite what I'm going to do up here. Um, I sort of have to turn that in and turn that in so I don't have a raw edge up there. Maybe I'll turn it in like that. But do I do that now? I don't know. Um, and that's a little bit... The, it, it, yeah, sort of like... Oh no, I wouldn't do that now. So, so just, sort of, just sort of go up there. I don't know. Just, go, so, just sort of start at the top and just start at the top and work your way quarter of an inch. I'm going to do it twice. Um, I'm going to do it twice around this bit of lining and um, catching it right here, catching it right there, quite quite good on each side, because um, there'll be there'll be some um, some strain. Oh, I did back stitch, back stitch, back stitch when I put that on, because when your hand goes in, that's where there's going to be strain. So really make sure so it doesn't rip out. You know me, you know me. Reinforce, reinforce, reinforce. So I'm going to go and I'm going to attach this first lining bit to my um, the front of my my holder here, making sure I keep that profile really nice. And again, back stitch, back stitch, go right down, go right down um, to the bottom. Um, oh, so pretty. Yeah, so I'll be back. I'm just going to stitch that. Um, so I'm not quite sure what I'm doing up here, but since this is one, I'm just going to go, uh, I'll trim this later. I'll just start at the top there and staying, this has been really nice. Up there is a little bit messed up, but just staying close to the edge, I, I mean, less than quarter of an inch, I would say, just slowly going around, catching that lining and the top on that profile you want. We're going to be binding this edge and it don't be frightened of that. It's, it's going to turn out really, really nice. Now, um, this one pom pom, I got to cut it off because I don't want that. I don't want that in my binding. So again, I'm just going to go. I'm going to top. I'm going to back stitch on this bit here. And then I'm just going to go around my whole my whole little sandwich here. 
just making making this making this sort of uh, all of these bits one. That's a little bit big. That's fine. I'll be trimming this anyway when I put my binding on. Whoops! Make sure make sure everything is make sure everything is where it should be. Now I think I might keep that pom pom. Make sure this is nice and flat. And again, back stitch, back stitch, back stitch. Because rucking the um, coat hanger into this, you know, can cause some stress. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. But it's pretty nice and flat. Oh, I have a big chunk of there. Oh, I didn't realize. I, I cut that wrong. Oh, well, never mind. Just sort of go up there. The coat hanger, the coat hanger will um, fit in there. Now, I won't bore you, but I'm going to go over and I'm going to do that another time. I'm going to do that twice. To it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my, my other bit of uh, lining or muslin or whatever, whoops, and I'm going to put it the, the wrong side down, the wrong side down, if you have like a pattern fabric there, if it's just muslin, e either way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the top on this piece here. Oh, what I did do, look what I did do. I tucked this bit under. I just, I just tucked that under there, I think. So it's a finished edge. I think that's, I think that's good. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's good. <laughs> and so now what I'm going to do is I'll, I'm going to cut, okay, what I'm going to do, let me just show you. I'm going to put that piece of, on, let me just see if it's in the frame. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to cut this piece of lining the exact shape of my, Go up a little bit there because I'll tuck this one in two of um of my back my piece here. Now I gotta figure out. I think at the very end I'm going to attach my um my ball fringe onto the bottom uh, at the end. That's good. Okay, so that's all been stitched down. So now what I'm going to do, there's my bag, sort of like almost done. Again, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin this. Let me get my pins. I'm going to pin this together. And again, oh, let me just see here what I will do. I think I'll just sort of tuck that in there. I, t I really, maybe I'll... Yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll go over and stitch that. Maybe I'll go over and stitch that down. And then when I do that, make it like that. Then when I do that, it will have a place. Will have a place. Oh wait a second. Oh no! Oh no! I shouldn't have done that. Oh flipping heck! Now I can't put my thing through it. Oh mate. Okay, don't don't do that. Oh, Jean, you messed up. Um, okay, well, I have to unpick this now. Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay, so don't do that. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you. The don't do this. I thought I was all clever. Yeah, don't, don't do that because this is the... Okay, it's between... Oops, I ripped that. So it's between here and here that we have to do it not here because this is where oh yeah look that's where we put our coat hanger up and I didn't and it's not there so I have to okay so never mind this top bit's getting me all messed up anyway so I'll I'm gonna pick oh pick this out, out do it there maybe I'll have to hand stitch it I don't know I didn't think and then I, I ripped it there but I'm gonna unpick this this um what I've what I've stitched here and and then what I'm gonna do is oh, okay I'll do that I'll do that. I'll unpick that. But what I'm going to do after I unpick it and I fix it. Oh, my word. This is the, the back is exactly the same as our front. And again, keeping our profile. That'll be raw edge up there. I don't know. I'll figure that one out. Um, I think I'm, I think, 
<laughs> I learn. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna curve my corners, but I'll show you that in a minute. <laughs> I always curve the corners um, when I attach my binding. So I'm just gonna go. This is nice and flat and nice and straight. I messed up at the top there because we want to be able to in this layer put our hanger in, and then we have the back. We have the back layer. So there are two layers there, and two layers here. Um, but our hanger goes in the first layer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpick that, worry about that later, and then I'm going to stitch around here, and then again I'm going to stitch around there twice. This is the back of our, this is the back of our hanger. Oh, if by all means, if you wanted to, actually, should I do that? Maybe, maybe, by all means, if you wanted to make that really pretty, the other bit of your half, half yard, you could make it really pretty. Yeah, maybe I'll do that instead of having it just plain. Actually, if you really, really wanted to make it strong and sturdy, look at that. You could have it. It's really a nice, substantial bag with the back is exactly... I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to have a really, really nice, sturdy bag. So I'm going to take the bit I have. I have it's just a half a yard of fabric or another fat quarter if you have it. I'm going to, I'm going to put the right sides together like that. And so I'm going to have the back. I'll figure that top bit out. I'll have the back as pretty as the front. So you don't have to do that. You can just have the muslin. But this is now one, two, three, four layers. That's lovely. Super. Super. Yeah. One, two, three, four layers. And I quite like that. So I'm just going to stitch around here and I'll be back. So before I sew around the shoulder of where my coat hanger is, I've made that mistake, okay? And I want to show you how I've rectified it. I've taken out, well, because I've, these are pinned, I, I'm assured that my, my coat hanger goes through. But what I've done is you have, to be sh you have to make sure, straighten everything out, before you sew that the backing on, okay, that you have, you have your coat hanger bit there, all right? Now, what it, what it is, is there are now, there are, let me just see, there's two layers of our lining and our, our top and our lining, there's two layers there, okay? And then we had the back piece, which makes a third layer, okay? But these are the, these are the ones, this layer here, the first two, are, you, are the ones you want to enclose, the first two are the ones you want to, if you do it this way, that you want to maybe top stitch along there to close that up. It's the last three layers. You see that? The last one, two, because we added the backing. It's so pretty. It's the last three layers that we're going to turn our inside. These are going to be stitched. Here's our hole for our, for our, our, our um, hanger. And then these are going to be stitched like that. Do you see? And actually, I'm going to keep it like that, so I have a little bit of pink at the top. So I'm going to stitch the first two layers of my top and my first lining together. And then I'm going to stitch the last three. They, they're attached there. You have to sort of, you just have to sort of um, take that off there. It's ripped a little bit for me. But I'm just going to turn that around like that and have the last three layers as one. Okay, you got that? So you have the first two layers. You have the first two layers as one. And then you have the last one, two, three layers turned over as one. Don't worry about these raw edges. These raw edges, it's just this top here that we want to be nice and uh, no raw edges here. These raw edges we're going to enclose. With so I fixed this. I um, tucked under the first two and then the last three. I've tucked that under and top stitched that. And then my hanger just fits beautifully right in there. And then you can just take this off to be washed. Um, or if, you're, if your top thing breaks or anything like that. So now that I know my hanger fits in there with a little bit of space, because now we're going to finish it. I've, t I've stitched around here twice. So this has been stitched like four times. But this isn't going to ever fall apart. And I have my, my lovely backing there. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my machine. And uh, any of you have, have watched me before, you know how I like using... Um, uh, does it... Where's the top? I, I like using my, what the flipping heck? I like using my um, bias tape here. Um, oh, come on. <laughs> I 
can't get in the package. <laughs> it's funny. Um, yeah, I like using my tape here. And I'm going to put my tape around the entire edge of my bag, just like I did here. Now, again, I'm going to go over to my machine. And if you haven't seen me do this before or use it or you're scared to do it and you're like, oh, I can't do this, um, I will show you the trick to doing bias tape beautifully. Oh, 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 yeah. But before I do that, I am going, oh, excuse me. I am going to curve <laughs> the corners. Let me get my scissors. My good scissors. I'm going to curve the corners of my, my little bag here. I didn't love the blue one. Um, I mean, it was cute and everything. I'm just going to keep take these corners. It's easier to do, um, to, to, to have the bias binding just curved around instead of trying to miter it on the end. I don't mind mitering it. Um, it's not like quilt binding or anything like, well, maybe it is. So I'm just going to do a, a very shallow curve here. Just about, come in in about perhaps an inch, an inch and a half. Just like I do my my quilt corners, just come in, just tuck, take that little tiny bit off of my, my bag here. And I like that. It's just softened the, end, the corners up. And then I'll put my binding on and I'll show you how I do that. So I've trimmed off the edges. There's four layers or four or five layers here, but I've stitched it around about four times, as you know, to reinforce this edge. And again, um, you people who've been following me, you know that I like working with my double fold bias tape here, okay? But if you're, if you're new to my channel and you haven't watched this before, um, you're, you get your packaged bias binding tape. And as you get it out from the manufacturers, there is a right and a wrong side. There is a larger and a narrower side, a wider and a narrower side. And what you want, if you can see here, it's only about a 32nd of an inch right there the bottom half here, this bit here from, the, from here to the fold is wider than this top bit here from here to the top fold. It's just that little bit wider. Hopefully you can see that. That allows for when we put it into a, when we want to bind the edge of a, of a raw seam, that when you sew on the top, you're assured of catching the backing. You're assured of that. The manufacturers made that clear. Now, what I want to do here is I want to start at the top of this neck piece here. And what we want to do is we want to, we want to, we want to tuck this edge, the top edge, in, in, inside. But I find that if I tuck it in like that, there's sort of these, these bits that stick out. That's how it came off the package. So I'm just going to, I think I just want to cut them like a little bit like that. Just cut those points off so that when I put this in, yeah, it's a little bit better. It's a little bit easier and you don't get those sticky points sticking out there. You, you, you see that? So now I'm just going to insert this folded bit. By all means, you can clip this, but I don't find or um, stitch it. I got a little, little thread there. I'm just going to put my raw edge of my top here right into the fold of this bias tape. And because it's been ma ma manufactured like that, it just fits beautifully. So I have a nice finished edge at the top, needled down, so I can see what I'm doing, press her foot, and I can open this up and I can just work inch by inch. Don't, don't worry about it. Just, I'm gonna place, I'm just gonna place this raw edge right up to that fold. No, not, not, not above it, nor, nor um, we don't want the bias floppy. We want this bit right up to fill the binding here. And because it's biased, just work a few uh, inches on end. Because it's biased, it will go, that's the whole point. Bias means it will stretch. Now you're not pulling it or else you get a pulled mess. But because it's on the bias and it stretches, it curves. You see how beautifully that curves? Now I know that the top of my bag here is right at the top of that binding and I'm stitching close and I know that I'm being I'm, I know it's being caught on the back side so now I'm just placing I'm just placing I'm not pulling anything I'm not shoving this inside I'm just placing it just inch at a time inch at a time and again because it's on the curve it will stretch around this the shoulder of this uh, coat hanger. Again, just inch by inch, 
even though it's a fairly decent curve just go slowly and just place don't pull it don't pull it you're just tucking and placing and folding over okay don't don't be pulling it and we come to this bit here which we've re really reinforced and you see all how all of those stitches are being enclosed really nice in this binding now the litmus test is when we turn it over because <laughs> you're like oh is it gonna is it gonna is it gonna have i caught it because we're stitching blind it looks great on the front let's see let's see what it looks like on the back ta-da look at that because oh oh it's a little bit off there <laughs> i say ta-da and i so see that i just have to go back and i just have to get a little bit closer there on that curve there that's okay though i can do that another little bit of stitching closer but for the most part as you can see i've caught it so i'm just going to continue and again i'm coming to a curve here i'm just placing it and folding placing it and folding and i'm always sort of looking ahead to where i'm going i'm placing it now this is a, another curve but again because it's on the bias it will do it beautifully just sort of tuck that under and it goes right to the fold right up to the fold there and then on my straightaway I like the curved corner this is only the third one I've done the first couple were just a mess but this is I think I'm quite pleased with my with this way I've, I've done it again not necessarily a tutorial you can't hold me to it <laughs> but um as you can hear my needle is punching through yeah so there there's the back there's the back and actually it's really caught it it's really nice actually it's it's I was I was erring on the cautious side and I've really caught that beautifully really nice right around the curve so uh, be sure that this stitching is not going to come out again coming to my curve just placing it placing it just inch by inch don't stress it don't pull it just place it my hands are in the way sorry but I don't have to this is how it's supposed to be again from the manufacturer now again we're just going to come on that straight away you can hear as i said my needle punching through the um four or five layers here but that's good it's a it's a nice substantial sturdy bag now if you remember i pulled that i i um took that one pom-pom off that would have been in the way so whatever if you have fringe or or rickrack or anything just make sure it's where you want it to be and again here's here's a little bit of the tricky part putting it keeping it on that curve that fold I should say and if it gets a tuck or a pleat in it that's fine who cares it'll look great it's beautiful again here we go just tuck it right under there into that fold lovely coming to this the last bit and let me just let me just um where my scissors go let me just cut this bit off here that top bit and then let me just take this okay so now i'm just working with this bit just going to put that right in there just be aware of be aware of my my lovely um profile of my coat hanger coming up to the neck and again i want to sort of just take off it's a little bit fiddly just take off that bit and then cut cut these cut that corner those uh triangles out so when i fold it i'm not really messing yeah i can just sort of place that there and there and no that's okay it's pretty good oh well, it's not quite there and there and know that it's it's nice and caught 
really um, back stitch it and there yeah it looks nice it looks nice on the front it looks nice on the back I've caught it I've caught it yeah there's a little tuck there that's fine I'm not bothered about that I've caught it there I've caught it there and I'm just gonna go back to that little bit where I went a little wide or it didn't, oh, I can see that. You see how that fold? I sort of missed the fold. So I sort of tuck that fold back onto itself again from about, where is it, about that point. Yeah, just sort of tuck that fold. I'm not really bothered about what the back will look like. Hopefully this will catch it. You see, I the fold is there for a purpose. I don't know if I caught that. I'm going back on the same stitching that I did. I don't know if I caught that or not. And let me just see. Yeah, I did. You see that? I caught it with another double row of stitching. That's fine. Looks great. So there is my... Oh no, it's not finished. It's not finished. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to press this and then I'm going to figure out how I'm just going to attach some of the, um, the bobble trim. But I'm just going to go over and press this. It's finished with a lovely binding. Everything is, there's no raw edges, there's no raw seams or anything anywhere. There's the back of my lovely bag, here's the front, and my coat hanger for if you want to go wash it. It fits beautifully right in there after some figuring it out. There's the hook there, beautifully, and it hangs really really oops, 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 oops. really really nice but now I what, what I wanted what I wanted to do is I wanted to just take this hanger out for a sec I just wanted to attach a little bit of my uh, bobble trim on the bottom here now I'm I'm trying to figure out here if I want it attached to the back if I want it to attach to the back and just see the bobble trim like that I would then sew I would then sew it to the back and uh, of my uh, onto the back the bottom or if I want to see the white actual trim on the bottom of my bag sew it to the sew it to where the bias binding is I think I like that. I think I like the trim showing the white bit of the trim showing as opposed to so it goes from pink just to the white and it and it brings the white down to the bottom instead of just the bobbles. So what I'm going to do is I've just cut a, a length. I've just cut a length and I'm sort of just going to have it smiling up to there. And I'm going to, I won't, I won't bore you with that. I'm just going to go over. I'm going to pin that. So it's right on top of that binding. Again, I'm laying it. I'm just laying it. I'm not pulling anything, not pulling anything. I'm going to just go over and I'm going to top stitch it, having pinned it or clipped it well, because I don't want it to like do that. I don't want it to, you know, go all askew on it. You'll see it. So I'm just going to be very careful and attach this, um, this ball fringe on the bottom of my bag and it will be done. I will just, I will just um, turn that under so we don't have any raw edges. And I just quite like it just sort of smiling up the bag, corners of the bag there. So so here's my finished little clothespin bag. Ah, so pretty. Yeah, I love it. Put the ball, little ball fringe down at the bottom. And uh, that lovely bias binding finishes it off just beautifully. I suppose you could use a quilt binding and just however you attach it, if you wanted to attach it here and then hand stitch it to the back, or as I do, stitch it to the back and machine stitch it to the front. I just use the bias binding because it's it's quickly it's uh, readily available. But this is just a, an example. Again, not a tutorial as such because maybe you have a different profile hanger, you do have different fabrics, but basic shape of how I did it. It's four layers. This is four layers of uh, fabric. This this here is two layers and then another layer this is two layers, so it's a, it's a nice substantial bag. I like it with the curved corners here um, for the clothespins. It holds quite a lot of clothespins. So that's my little, um, not again, not tutorial, but how I did it. This one didn't turn out quite as nicely, although it's so pretty, very, very pretty. I had my squared corners and my rickrack. 
and some bobble trim. But that is one napkin right there, just cut in half. One napkin and a little bit of fabric, a little bit of muslin. Um, this one I did not back it, so it's not as it's not as sturdy. This one I decided to back that because I had the fabric left over from the half a yard. So this one is really nice and substantial. And I think if I would make it again, I would do it that way. It's really, I, I quite like making things nice and substantial. Um, and again, completely, completely washable. You can take that out. Or if your hook does break off, which cheap jack, you know, um, hangers will do now and again. So there is my little bag. I hope you love it. I hope uh, you, you make it the lovely little sweet little fabrics you can make it any any fabrics you want but that's basically how I've done it a bit of bias binding and just a few little half a yard yard of fabric or a napkin or a, or you could you could embellish this as you could put fringe you could put ruffles um, the rick rack you could do anything you want so I do hope you've enjoyed this folks thanks again see ya bye